Let's take a few moments and look at the if construct in PowerShell. A very simple version of it might look something like this. Uh, let's say I'm using read host to prompt for an age. Now I can use an if construct to do a comparison on that. The if construct basically starts with the keyword if. In parentheses, you'll have some criteria. And then you will have curly braces enclosing a conditional block of commands or code. If whatever's in here evaluates to true, then whatever's in here will execute. So for example, in here I can put right host, you are old enough to vote in the US. And now we'll put our comparison if age is greater than or equal to 18. So that's a very simple use of if. Now you can also extend this with the else if, and this gets its own comparison criteria and its own conditional code block. So if age is greater than or equal to 18, then this will execute. If age is less than or equal to 15, then we'll say write host, you are not old enough to drive in most US states. The trick with this is only the first condition that's actually true will execute. So if the age is greater than or equal to 18, this will never be evaluated. You can have as many of these else if blocks as you want. You can also have an else block. The else block does not get its own condition. It just gets the conditional code in curly braces. The trick is if neither this nor this are true, then this will execute. Now in this case, we've already said, if the age is greater than or equal to 18, this will run. If it's less than or equal to 15, then this will run. If the person is 16 or 17, then they're some unknown age. We don't know what they can do. So again, you can have as many of these else ifs as you want. You can optionally finish off with an else, and everything always starts with an if. This is probably one of the most used scripting style constructs in PowerShell's scripting language.